Ever wonder what uh, really makes your router work or your smart TV? I mean, it's not magic, mm -hmm. but it might seem like it sometimes, right? Yeah. Well, we're about to demystify that a bit today, diving into the fascinating world of BusyBox. Have you ever heard of it? I have. Okay. Maybe not all of our listeners have, but I guarantee you, you've used it probably today. It's kind of the hidden engine and countless devices, routers, smart TVs, you name it often called the Swiss Army knife of embedded Linux, if you're familiar with that term. And that's what makes it so fascinating to us. Our deep dive today takes us through BusyBox's own evolution, using its version history as kind of a window into the challenges it solves for the tech that we use literally every single day. Now, uh, joining me to unpack this is our expert who can shed some light on why something you've likely never heard of is actually so essential. Yeah, BusyBox is a really great example of what I think of as clever engineering, right? So you think about all these different devices we use every day, and they have to be very small and compact, but they have a lot of functionality. Mm. So we're talking about things like routers and smart TVs and even connected appliances. Right. And these aren't powerful computers. No, definitely not. By any stretch of the imagination. Uh, so we're talking really limited memory storage processing power. Right. And that's where something like BusyBox comes in. Okay. So how do you cram the functionality of something like Linux, which we all know and love, yeah. into something like a smart TV, which has a fraction of the resources? It's a really, really interesting problem. And that's the brilliance of BusyBox. Yeah. Right. It takes essential Linux commands. So think like L, C, D, grep, all the tools that you normally use on a full-fledged system yeah. and bundles them into a single space efficient executable. Uh -huh, okay. So it's kind of like, imagine like a, well, a Swiss army knife. That's why they call it that, <laughs> right? You've got your saw, you've got pliers, you've got a screwdriver all in your pocket. BusyBox brings that same efficiency to these embedded systems. Mm. Okay, so that's a pretty sweet solution if you've got limited hardware. But I mean, there's gotta be a trade-off, right? You're shrinking things down so drastically. Of course, of yeah. course. You know, there are always trade-offs in engineering. Right. And so sometimes to achieve that smaller size, you might have, you know, slightly fewer features in a BusyBox command than its, you know, full-fledged counterpart. Mm -hmm. But the benefit of having this single, you know, multifunctional executable often outweighs those compromises, okay. especially when you're talking about devices where every single kilobyte of storage is precious. Yeah. It's a kind of like um, choosing between a full mechanics tool set, right? And then like a really well-equipped multi-tool when you're backpacking, right? Exactly. Like, yeah, you sacrifice some specific tools, but the portability is incredible. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's precisely why BusyBox is, is so ubiquitous in embedded systems. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. You don't even realize it. Exactly. Okay, so we've established that BusyBox is this like lean, mean, multi-tool machine, but... How has it evolved over time, right? We've got a stack of BusyBox change logs here dating back to version 1.22.0 all the way up to 1.35.0. And uh, let's fire up the Wayback Machine. Let's take a look at what we've got. BusyBox 1.24.0 catches my eye. Okay. It introduces something called Run Meter, which already sounds intriguing. <laughs> Map Meter is great. That's a great example of a powerful tool hidden within BusyBox that many people don't even realize exists. Okay. It's all about real-time system monitoring. Now, why would that even be important on a system that's already, like, streamlined for efficiency? That's a great question. Because even in a resource-constrained environment, you know that things can go wrong. Of course. Right. And so Run Meter lets you peek under the hood in real time. So it's like having a live dashboard showing CPU usage, memory consumption, disk activity. It's critical for troubleshooting performance bottlenecks. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Right. Imagine trying to diagnose a slow network or a sluggish device without any visibility into what the system is actually doing. Quantometer gives you that crucial insight. So instead of just like turning it off and on again. Exactly. Or like, you know, blindly rebooting your router and just hoping for the best. Exactly. This actually lets you see if it's struggling with too many connections or something else entirely. Exactly. And because it's part of BusyBox, it's already there, consuming very minimal resources itself. That's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. It's like having a built-in mechanic on speed dial for your devices. I love it. I love it. All right. Let's move a little further down the timeline. BusyBox 1.33.0. This one's interesting. It added the uh, ASHI applet. Now, on the surface, this seems like a really simple addition. I mean, it just displays the ASHI table, right? Right. It seems very simple, but its inclusion, I think, reveals a really key aspect of BusyBox's philosophy, which is comprehensiveness. 
Okay. Even at the most fundamental level. So while it might seem very trivial, the ASCII table is really a cornerstone of computing. Right. It dictates how computers represent text. But why include it when we have like Unicode and all these fancy character sets these days? That's a great question. It's because, you know, even with the advent of Unicode, ASCII remains the bedrock for a huge number of systems and protocols, uh. especially in the world of embedded systems and networking. Oh, okay. So by including that ASCII applet, it ensures that BusyBox can handle these situations without requiring you know, yet another tool. So even though it seems simple, it's really speaking to BusyBox's commitment to covering all the bases. All the bases. No matter how small. Okay, last up on our BusyBox history tour, version 1.35.0. This one focuses less on flashy new features and more on the, uh, how do I say this, the less glamorous but incredibly critical aspect of software. Yes. Security. Security. We're talking bug fixes, security updates, all the behind the scenes work that uh, doesn't really get the fanfare it deserves a lot of the time. Yeah, and rightly so. These updates might seem very mundane on the surface. Right. But they're absolutely crucial for the integrity of the systems that are running on these devices. Mm -hmm. We're talking about patching vulnerabilities, preventing potential exploits, things that could have really significant consequences if they were left unaddressed. So these aren't just about like making things run a bit smoother, a bit faster. We're talking about like the security of the entire system. Security of the entire system, yeah. potentially. But with something as seemingly small as BusyBox, like how big of a deal can these security risks really be? You'd be surprised. Embedded systems are increasingly targeted by attackers because they're often seen as easier points of entry into larger networks or systems. Oh, okay. Right. Think about it. These devices, they're connected to your home network. They're potentially holding some sensitive data. Right, yeah. I mean, that's a great point. We often overlook the security of these smaller devices, you know, because we kind of assume that they're too insignificant to be targeted, right? right? But in a world where everything is connected. Everything is connected. Any weak link can have that ripple effect. Exactly. And the developers of BusyBox, they understand that. Hence the constant vigilance, the dedication to patching vulnerabilities, and keeping the software secure. Okay, so we've explored the... Uh, the fascinating, I would say, world of BusyBox, how it bundles it. essential utilities into this tiny package, right? Mm -hmm. That's perfect for these devices with limited resources. And we've also seen how its evolution kind of reflects like the changing landscape of security and functionality in the embedded world. Mm -hmm. But how do we actually interact with these devices, yeah. these tiny computers that are hidden in plain sight all around us, right? That's where I think our next tool comes in something called Nmap. 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 Sounds familiar, right? Is that <laughs> something hackers use? Well, you know, it's true that Nmap is a favorite tool among like security researchers and ethical hackers, you know. But it's so much more than that. Think of it as a like a powerful network exploration toolkit, a way to kind of map out and understand the devices and services that are running on a network. It's used by system administrators, network engineers, security professionals all over the world. So if BusyBox is like the toolbox inside these devices, yeah. Nmap is like the blueprint of the whole network, right? I, that's a great way to put it, yeah. Showing us how they all connect. Yeah, so Nmap basically helps you discover devices on a network, see what services they're running, what operating systems they're using, and even identify potential vulnerabilities. Oh, wow. And much like BusyBox, it offers both simplicity and incredible depth. You can use it for like, quick scans just to get a basic overview of your network, or you can really dive into advanced techniques to like uncover hidden details. That's pretty impressive. So it sounds like Nmap is the perfect tool to use alongside BusyBox, right? right? We get to see what's going on inside these embedded devices with BusyBox, and then we can use Nmap to understand how they interact with everything else. Precisely, it's like having x-ray vision for your network. Okay. You can see not just what devices are there, mm. but you can get a sense of their potential strengths and weaknesses. It really highlights how these like seemingly different tools are actually two sides of the same coin, right? Yeah. Each providing this unique perspective on this like intricate world of technology that we just interact with every single day and don't even really think about. Yeah, and just like BusyBox, Nmap has gone through its own evolution, yeah. you know? Constantly being refined and updated to keep pace with, you know, the ever-changing landscape of networks and security and how people are using this this technology. There seems to be a common thread here that ability to adapt and evolve is crucial for any technology to stay, you know, relevant and effective. Absolutely. 
So we've explored these really powerful tools, BusyBox and Nmap. We've delved into like their capabilities, touched on their importance in like understanding and interacting with technology at a much deeper level. What I find really fascinating here is how something as, uh, I don't know, maybe even as dry as like a change log right. can provide such a unique window into the evolution of these tools and like by extension, the challenges and the triumphs of the tech world itself. Absolutely. Yeah. It's often those seemingly minor details, those incremental updates, bug fixes, where you see the true dedication to crafting, you know, robust and reliable tools. Yeah. Each entry in a change log represents a problem solved, a feature added, a step forward in the constant pursuit of building better technology. It's a good reminder that even the most complex systems, right, are built brick by brick, line of code by line of code. Yeah. And those individual pieces, like that OnMeter tool and BusyBox or like, you know, the detailed scan options in Nmap all contribute to the bigger picture in ways that we might not always realize. And those little details, right, they paint a bigger picture. It's so true. And, you know, it strikes me that we often take for granted that complexity, right? Like it just works. It just works. My phone, I can like search the web. I can watch, uh, you know, streaming shows. It just works. Right. But like behind the scenes, there's all this crazy stuff going on. There is a lot going on. Yeah. It's very easy to forget that there's this intricate world of software and hardware working tirelessly to make our, you know, digital lives possible. It's a, it really is mind boggling when you think about it. And, you know, I think what we've uncovered here with BusyBox and Nmap, these are two tools that offer like just a little glimpse, a little right? Little peek, yeah. Into that world yeah. and each in their own unique way. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And what I think is so cool is you don't need to be a programmer. You don't need to be a network engineer to appreciate kind of the ingenuity of this. Right. Like, for example, the next time your router updates its firmware, right, you can just picture in your mind all those tiny little busy box commands working away diligently to make sure that everything runs smoothly. It's like this hidden world. Or imagine using like Nmap to scan your home network, right? You might be surprised to see how many devices are actually connected, silently communicating with each other, communicating with the outside world. Oh, yeah. You start to realize how much is actually on your network, mm -hmm. right? It's like discovering this hidden city operating right under our noses. Mm -hmm. And I think the more we understand about these underlying systems, the more we can appreciate, you know, the power and the potential. Yeah. But also the responsibility that comes with this in increasingly connected world that we live in. It's not just like how they work, but the implications, right? The implications, yeah. that's right. Of this technology existing. And it's been a fascinating journey, this deep dive into BusyBox and Nmap going from like, you know, the heart of countless devices, how these networks connect them. We've uncovered some really cool hidden gems like Nanmeter, who knew? Wow. We talked about the importance of those security updates and hopefully gained a much deeper appreciation for this often overlooked world of embedded systems. Absolutely. And what's truly remarkable is that this is just the tip of the iceberg, right? Yeah. The world of open source software. Oh, yeah. Of which BusyBox and Nmap are such prime examples is vast and constantly evolving. So for our listeners who are like, oh, I want to learn more, this is so cool, where would you suggest they even start? Well, I think that's the beauty of open source software is the accessibility, right? Yeah. So you can actually go and look at the source code for BusyBox and Nmap, mm -hmm. explore the documentation. I mean, if you're feeling really adventurous, yeah. you can even contribute to the development of these tools. Mm -hmm. It's a world of continuous learning and discovery. That's amazing. So. To our listeners, we leave you with a challenge, right? The next time you interact with some piece of technology, yes. take a moment, just a moment, to consider the intricate systems at play. Yeah. Think about the tools that make it all possible, the developers who poured their expertise into crafting them. Think about the potential that technology holds when we actually take the time to understand it. It's an amazing world out there. It really is. Until next time, keep exploring keep questioning, and keep diving deep.